My game of the day from round seven of the Tartar Steel Tournament is Temo Rajabov against Vidit Gujarati. Before we look at the game, remember, if you're not a subscriber, then do click on the button down there, and it's free to subscribe, and click on the bell for instant notifications for when we post a new video. And if you want to support the channel, then check out the links up there or down there to PayPal and Patreon.com. Right, the game. Radyabov against Vidit. Both players having a pretty decent tournament up to this point. Radyabov, I always think of as being a very solid player. Quite, um, in some ways, quite risk averse. Although he has played some amazing Kings Indians with black. With white, I always think of him as being, yeah, much more conservative. Vidit on plus one had this very nice endgame win against uh, Van Forest, but generally also a pretty solid player. So, what would we be treated to today? A solid encounter? Well, no, not at all. Let's see what happens. Started in a pretty orthodox manner with the Ragazin. And this can lead to very interesting positions, actually. So the point of this check is to force the knight to come to c6. Obviously necessary to protect the bishop. So why do you want to force the knight to c6? Well, it blocks the c-pawn. And that means that black can't attack this nice pawn on d4. So basically black has to go for the other break in this position, which is the pawn to e5. And white plays bishop d2. a3 is also possible there. And the bishop came back to d6. Lots of moves possible here. a6, even e5 has been played by Carlson in that position. And h3, okay. This is called the Battle of the Tempo. Basically, white wants to bring this bishop out, um, but doesn't want to have to waste a move in a sense. So he's playing a useful move here, hoping that black will take on c4. And then he can recapture in one move with the bishop. And the same goes for these moves as well. Basically, they're useful waiting moves. And white is hoping that he'll be able to recapture on c4 in one move. Uh, typical for queen's pawn openings, particularly the queen's gambit. This, this battle of the tempo. h6 has been played before. Bishop d7, also normal move. And finally... Uh, Radubov cracks and plays bishop e2. So now Vidit exchanges on c4. Now the move, as I said, the move you want to make is e5. But that allows knight g5 attacking the pawn on f7. That's a little bit uncomfortable. And um, potentially some ideas to attack h7 too. So first of all, Vidit played h6 here to prevent that knight g5 move. And here, Aronian against Giri went castles, and that's pretty standard. And then e5. But instead of castles, Radubov went for it here. He thought for... Uh, over 17 minutes and played g4 and suddenly we have a fantastic fight on our hands. Well in many ways it's a logical move. If your opponent has played h6 then if you get in g5 then you can crack open the g file uh, and start attacking the king. Well that's all very well but you have to take into account fact that black is counter-attacking through the middle of the board. Now, if white wants to, to take some of the sting out of the position, of course it's possible to exchange here. But the most uncompromising move is to career on with g5, and that's what Radiobov did. So he's really playing out of his skin today, 
absolutely going for it. Um, now it's possible to take on d4, and this is rather similar to the game, but Vidit threw in b5 first, attacking the bishop, which dropped back to a2, and then he took on d4, so no uh, appreciable difference. Now, of course, that can't be recaptured. It's, uh, I'm afraid, against the laws of chess because the king would be in check. So, g takes h6. Radibov is just going for it here. And so he's sacrificing a piece just to open up files against the king. And there's all kinds of interesting stuff going on here. This is a mad position. I mean, I should point out one particular feature here that, I mean, this, of course, is a, is a, a dumb move for all kinds of reasons, but I just want to point this out, that this is a constant motif in the position. Of course, the queen cannot be captured because of this pin. So we need to bear that in mind. Um, now... Vidit took on c3, took the knight. Obviously, it's the most uncompromising move. In fact, bishop f4 is very interesting here. Now, one of the points of this, apart from hammering on e3, is that after this move, queen g6, we're back to this move again. So it can't be taken because of this pin. And also, the white queen threatens queen takes g7 mate. But here black has a simple defense. Bishop takes pawn. Now, of course, white can take this pawn. But actually, the king is now relatively safe here. And black is starting to counterattack here. And in fact, black is, is doing fine here after this to escape this move remarkably is is actually fine for black because white is in trouble with this piece here but also black threatens to drive the queen away and take this bishop so after bishop f4 this is incredibly complicated in fact it's a mistake to play queen g6 white is still okay after castle's queen side but after bishop h6 Black also stabilizes the situation on the king side. Now, I think this position is probably about equal after black breaks things open on the queen side. But I just wanted to point out that if black wants to put the brakes on, then bishop f4 is the move in this position. Um, but not easy to see that queen g6 is actually okay for black. Now, instead of that, Vidit simply took the knight on c3. And this was recaptured. Now, this is really scary because white now has two bishops just beaming across the board, plus the queen looking here too, plus the open g file. Absolutely terrifying. And now queen g6 really is a terrible threat. So therefore bishop e6 stops that. So at least uh, Vidit is exchanging off one piece. And here Radibov took on e6. In fact, rook g1 is perhaps even better. Now there's an incredible variation here. Let me show this to you. So there's really nothing better than to take that bishop. Rook takes. The king shouldn't step into the corner. That would be really disastrous because um, that would be lead to mate very quickly. So king f8. And now instead of recapturing the bishop, which is also possible actually, you can just play castle's queen side. I think it's so funny just ignoring this bishop here and just carrying on. And I mean, there are some, yeah beautiful variations here but let me, let me just show you this one so let's just swing the rook across and white is basically preparing to uh, push this pawn um, among other things there are lots of ideas 
And when the king moves out, then actually this is crushing. This is such a straightforward way of playing. And a queen g6 threatens this one. Now it's possible to defend that by playing this move. So that opens up a defense with the bishop. But actually this is just crushing. Uh, and queen h8 mate uh, is is the, the big killer move. I love that variation because it is so root one, as we say in football. Um, it is so direct. White just didn't slow up for anything. Didn't bother cap recapturing that bishop in the corner. Just move the pieces over and just poof, so direct um, towards the king. That didn't happen. So that was rook g1. Uh, Radubov played bishop takes bishop instead, which is also very strong. And rook g1. So he's a piece down, but this bishop is absolutely huge. And of course, the rook on the g file as well. In combination with the queen. Um, Vidit played knight e8 here. I think the last chance to defend was knight h5. And this is still actually very good for white and I mean it looks horrendous for black in this position h7 mate is threatened but there's this mad idea bishop g3 to close the g-file uh, and also set up potential counter-attack here but actually this is still very good for white um, because white at some point is going to get some material back. And now this move. And black is, is really suffering in this position. Um, I mean, white is still the exchange down, but black's so badly coordinated here. This It's still very good for white. Um, let's go back. So that was knight h5, as I said. I think that's the last chance. I mean, that's a very computery kind of defense with, with bishop g3. Um, very odd. Instead, Vidit played knight e8, which is kind of the normal human move. And in fact, the way that Radyubov wins this is pretty remarkable. So obviously the king can't go in the corner because of queen h7 mate. So the king steps here and queen h7 anyway, threatening rook g8. And now comes the tricky bit because it seems as though black is starting to coordinate his pieces. Well, he is. And let me see, what's the score? White is still a piece down, but there is a win for white. Uh, but, of course, this needs exact calculation. But Radyubov succeeded. Knight g5. So, with the obvious threat of rook takes f7. And, well, if necessary, potentially knight takes rook. So, rook takes pawn. So, if pawn takes, then it'll be black's turn with checks after bishop g3. So... You know, White had to see this one and also see that um, there's, there's a way out of this as well. King f1, a very cool move. And in fact, there's, there's no sensible check here for Black. There's still a threat of rook takes pawn. And if the rook goes back, then, well, White can choose which mate, but that'll do. So... Vidit played the knight back to d8 to defend this pawn. Queen g8 and h7. So this pawn is rolling all the way through. And, well, if black doesn't have something quick, then he's in terrible trouble. So therefore, bishop g3. I love it that both sides at this point are just kind of passing by each other, just kind of ignoring each other at this moment. So queen takes f2, mate threatened. And Radibov, of course, would have had to have seen this several moves back. There is a defense, 
by the skin of his teeth. Knight e4. Defending f2. This was taken. And now rook takes bishop. Eliminates that dangerous piece. So there's no longer a mate threat. White is still a piece down. But this is a problem. And black's king is still a problem. Only move to stop the pawn rolling through is rook h4. And then... It's white's turn to attack the king again. Now, that rook move just prevents the king running and sets up rook e3, and that is fatal. Rook takes pawn played. Rook check. Knight e6 forced, and then the rook goes in the corner, and um, white is reasonably well coordinated here in fact that black doesn't have anything on the king's side and now it's the end of the game white is the exchange up rook for a knight up and still has an attack against the king and radibov finished in style with rook takes and this just leaves black's king completely open this is really nice check so uh, with a skewer and after f6 that was the end of the game um, if the king moves up then rook takes rook and if the queen comes back then you can exchange oh, well let me just show that exchange and then white is a whole rook up now that was the final position what a splendid game, and great to see Radyabov going for it with this move, g4, which really put the pressure on, on Vidit. Objectively, actually, black, I think, is, is just about okay in that position, but in practical terms, you know, over the board, extremely difficult to defend. Great game. If you want to check out other games from Totos, the Tata Steel Tournament, then do Click on the link for the playlist. You'll find it up there or down there. I never know where they're going to appear. And remember, if you're not a subscriber, then do click on that subscribe button down there.